Kai, Matt, and James. I think James, uh, well, I don't think, I know James goes to your school, so he's, uh, some of you may know his face. But dreams can come true. Really, they can come true. If we're willing to risk embarrassment, the threat of failure, and keep on dreaming. And I believe dream should be something that you can see, but maybe out of reach for some point in time, but if you keep on believing, keep on dreaming, keep on reaching out for it, one day that dream can be in your hand. Just like Duncan shared, dreams have been with us since the existence of mankind. And researchers have shown that there is a purpose and an importance to dreaming. In fact, research has shown that when people are deprived from entering into their dream phase, or the REM state, they exhibit symptoms of irritability and anxiety. And in one particular study, they got a bunch of volunteers together, and they put them to sleep. But just before they went into their dream phase, the REM state, they woke them up. And this continued throughout the night. And they still slept the same amount of hours as they normally do. But the next day, it was interesting, they observed them going about their daily day next day, and they observed some, some interesting things. And that was, they found that they were disoriented, depressed, crabby, whatever that means. <laughs> and even became quick, tempered. And I found that as the study went on over several nights, the more the subjects became more and more agitated. And they concluded that what they found was deprivation of REM sleep causes, come in, lateness? No, it causes, <laughs> it causes, <laughs> it causes, I uh, lost my voice. <laughs> it causes uh, oversensitivity, lack of concentration, and memory loss. And they sh the researchers concluded that dreaming was important. In fact, that dreams, dr by dreaming, it actually can help tackle stress. And that dreaming was a necessity part of our existence. And that it helped us to revitalize our body and our mind. Now, over the, last, uh, over the last decade or so, I've been privileged enough to have uh, traveled and, and connected with thousands of young people around this city, around, this, around the nation, and abroad. And when I think about this study, I can see some similarities with the young people that I've come across. Many of them are disoriented, depressed. 
agitated, anxious, quick-tempered, feeling this sense of, where am I going? What am I doing? And I pose this thought to you this afternoon, that could it possibly be that they're losing their ability to dream? Could it possibly be that every time that they were entering to their dream state, they were woken up? Every time they begin to believe that they could have that dream job, that maybe they could have, that every time they begin to believe that they could have that dream relationship, their dream family. You know the great Australian dream of own your own home? Well, as the Wiggles would say, wake up, Jeff. <laughs> I've got kids, sorry. But it's almost like every time that they would go to sleep, go into that dream state, they get woken up and says that, you know what, that can't happen. Maybe they've lost or losing their ability to dream, which is causing a sense of disorientation. It's causing a sense of hopelessness and anxiousness and agitation. You know, we've heard, all heard things like, dream on, mate. See, I, I was, uh, my heritage is from Ghana, but I was born and raised in Australia. And I've been my time, I've heard many times where people have said of a big idea or some dream, and people have said to them, you're dreaming. It's almost like we've got a bit of Dal Kerrigan from the castleness. <laughs> you know? Dad, ergonomic chairs. Four of them. How much? 180? Dreaming. <laughs> Dad, 450. But joust sticks? Tell him he's dreaming. Dad, I want to be a pro surfer. In Canberra? <laughs> dreaming. <laughs> but it's like that. It's almost like we tell each other, Wake up to yourself. Don't dream. It's almost as if that dreaming has become this extremely dangerous act. Too risky, too adventurous. And in fact, dreaming should be something that should be outlawed. Dreaming is just something that is actually a wrong thing to do. Right? Well, I say, well, wrong. I think it's precisely the, things that we should, it's precisely the thing that we should be doing. In fact, I know many young people who love that sense of adventure and that kind of smell of excitement and thrill is what drives them. So I tell them, let's tell them, dream on. Dream. You see, when you're small, it's almost as like when you're a kid, you think big. But as you get big, you start to think small. And something happens in that space between our childhood and our adulthood. We begin to believe that maybe dreams are not possible. We begin to make what we think is big to small. And I want to encourage you today to dream on. Because we don't want to educate ourselves out of our dreams. Now, I'm not disposing or discounting a dose of realism, but it really doesn't have to be at the expense of our ability to dream. You see, we don't not drive cars because of risk of an accident. We don't not get a job because you might get fired or made redundant. Just ask Kevin 07. <laughs> you don't not play sport because you might not score a goal. You know, dreaming is good, it's healthy, it's good for your body. You know, in that movie Rapunzel, in that uh, Rapunzel and the movie Tangled, anyone seen Tangled? And uh, she wants to go to see the floating lights. And on 18th birthday, she finds this, this cut story short, Flynn Rider, and uh, she gets him and says, you have to take me. And he tried to kind of discourage her by taking her to the, I think, the Snuggle Inn, Duckling Inn, 
where there's all these thugs and, and guys, and hopefully he could discourage her from pursuing her dream. Well, a scuffle kind of breaks out in that place, and uh, she starts getting frustrated. She could see that the mission is starting to be diverted, and she just steps in, and uh, she says, show some humanity. Doesn't any one of you have a dream? And then she casts her cows back as a big thug comes towards her and says, I had a dream once. <laughs> and being charmed by Rapunzel, she encourages these guys to follow their dreams. So I believe we need to be dream converters, not dream killers. What do I mean by dream converters? You know, when someone at the age of five says that, I want to be an astronaut, we shouldn't tell them, dream on, or wake up to yourself. We should actually encourage that, because you never know, that dream can start out as wanting to be an astronaut, but be converted into becoming an environmental champion. That dream could start as a young person wanting to become a rock star and, and have everyone go, you're so cool, you're so famous to turn out to becoming a person that becomes a champion to empowering young people and telling them, you know what, you don't become somebody, you are somebody. I encourage us sir, to become dream converters, not dream killers. You see, this reminds me of a young man who came to Canberra at the age of 15, and he had no idea that getting involved with culture break. We had this dream. Well, he pursued it, and I encouraged him. Even when his parents had said to him, it wasn't going to be possible. He should stop and go to university and do that. But he had this dream. And I remember him crying and saying yes. And for the course of time, this young man went on to become uh, uh, on Australia Thinking, uh, uh, so Thinking and Dance, and then came through in Australia's Got Talent. And this year, he's now a judge on Australia's Got Talent himself, Tim O'Matic. I encourage you to follow your dreams. You see, Joseph dreamt. Martin Luther King had a dream. Susan Boyle dreamed a dream. <laughs> and Jessica Watson, that 16-year-old girl at the time who sailed solo around the world, on the front of Daily Telegraph a few years ago when she came back, and still in Daily Telegraph, I'm just an ordinary girl who had a dream. So I encourage you today to keep on dreaming. Be a, be a dream converter. And I conclude my presentation, my message on this. You might say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> and one day, I hope you'll join us, and the world will be as one. Thank you.